This week we're hunting elk in New Mexico. I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna bring my 500 nitro that my father gave me. A beautiful Holland Double 500. Who can say they burned an RV to the ground in the middle of nowhere, New Mexico? In stealth mode, don't breathe, don't move, don't do anything. He's way up on the ridge, you can see him shining. That's when I decided I'm gonna take this bull. Time to get up, time to get up now. Our lives move pretty fast, but it's only in the moment of the hunt that life slows down. It's not a matter of what we do, but how we do it. With passion, drive, and the challenge to accept nothing but our best. We are the Wildlifers. We're going to New Mexico this week to hunt elk. It's a pretty unique place. It's beautiful. It's a very large open area ranch. It's just, it's massive. The elk have migrated this far south, which is very unusual. It makes it spectacular for a hunt because there's a lot of bulls or several bulls and not as many cows. The numbers aren't high there. So it makes our hunt very interesting. They really respond when you call because they're looking for somebody. Uh, the hunting's kind of hard. It's tough. You know, you don't see a lot of bulls, but the ones you do see are usually pretty big. You know, anywhere you can go and turn down 350 inch bulls consistently, knowing that you're probably going to find a bigger one, I think you're in the right spot. elk hunt every single year. Uh, it's my favorite hunt period of the year, by far my favorite elk hunt. It's great to have Dan and Stephanie come out. We're good old personal friends as well as Dan's my longest standing client I have right now as well. And This elk hunt is amazing. There's, there's huge bulls and uh, it's a huge ranch, but it's also very difficult. There's very few elk on it and it, it, it really takes a lot of, a lot of effort to, to get a bull and uh, it's, it just makes it all that much more fun. So I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to this hunt. I'm just as happy following Stephanie around with my camera when she's hunting and then being able to go home and put them on my computer and look at them and see what I could do better next time. So it's a win-win for me. You know, he really is pretty good at it. He takes some really amazing pictures and I'm glad because, you know, he gets a lot of good shots for me. So the first morning we head out, you know, everybody's got high hopes and, and it's just dead. We're, we're not able to raise a bugle anywhere. It, it was extremely difficult. Elk hunting in this part of New Mexico can be challenging due to the extreme terrain and low numbers of elk. But payoff is worthy for being patient. With an unsuccessful morning, Bridger takes the crew to another part of the ranch. Right off the bat, where the first place we tried to bugle from, we bugled and I got a response and it was, it was game on, we're ready to go now, we've got a bull answering us. So one of the big problems is, is the sun is setting on the ridge he's on. It's literally, we're staring right into the sun. We just can't see him yet. 
There he is. There he is. Watch. I'm going to make him bugle, okay? Yes. See him right there. Oh, there he is. He's not a shooter. So after we get a good look at him, he's, he's really a great bull, but we're going to pass on him. We've done as well in the past, and we're looking to upgrade. Even though Stephanie passes on this bull, it's still a win for me because I was able to get some really cool pictures of it. Man, that's a really good elk. Boy, if I was there, we'd be done. The Wildlifer crew is hunting in New Mexico for elk and Stephanie already got on her first elk, but passed in hopes of finding a bigger one. As the crew settles in for the evening, hopes are high for the morning. You know how funny it'd be if this thing burned down? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Let the RV burn to the ground. When the alarm went off and we have a sm small chance of the RV burning down, it, it would be far better than if you were to kill, say, a 450-inch bull elk. I mean, anybody can go get a 450-inch bull elk, but who can say they burned an RV to the ground in the middle of nowhere, New Mexico? No, it would not be funny. Oh, yeah. I need a shower and I want a place to sleep. No, it would not be cool if this thing burned down because who's gonna fix my hair and my makeup and I like to lay on a bed and take a shower. I am not staying in a tent. Do you have any idea how funny it'd be? No, it would not be funny. Yes, that would be funny. Will you be the only one laughing? You wouldn't be the only one laughing. <laughs> Men and fire. I mean, they gotta have something blow up, I don't know. I'd like a place to stay, that's all. I just want a nice bed and a nice shower. I'll be happy. The next morning, the crew hit the trails early and was finding plenty of elk sign in the area, but was having trouble locating one. Why hasn't this bull answered us, man? Sir, why hasn't this bull answered us? I don't know, but that's fresh, man. Did we just run him off? I mean, that's like last night sometime. Yeah, he could be two miles up ahead of us, too. Did it? Yeah, he's still in the road. I'm gonna top this hill and bugle anyways, but I they will get it. Answer us. There's nothing like elk hunting when there's elk. Y'all ever heard about these things called cattle guards? We got them down in South Texas. You gotta really look into them. You can just drive right across them. You don't have to get out and open gates and whatnot. <laughs> Dan's not used to opening a gate. <laughs> he didn't like it. Dig a little hole, stick it down, and you can just drive. Run him over. Look at him. Sour. Seriously, why don't they have cattle guards? We're going and going and going, and we keep bugling and bugling, and we just we haven't heard anything. It's really, really dead. And then here pretty quick, Nick calls me on the radio, and he's got a bugle. Where, for what direction from the media was it? So we're, we're high hopes, you know, we hadn't heard a bugle all morning. We're on our way to see what Nick's got. Sounded like he was either at the end of the finger or maybe just down off of the Not finger. Not very far. Not far, yeah. no. Okay. All right, let's go into super stealth mode. Big five by five. There he is, right here, right here on that side of that cedar. See his horn. Yeah, he's a management bull, is what he is. We call this bull in and he's just not much at all. So it was kind of a disappointment, but it was good to hear a bull bugle and we got to call him in and see him. It was fun. The 
The Bramans are hunting elk in New Mexico in an area that has a sparse population. But when you find the right one, it's all worth it. Having a pretty slow start, Stephanie is looking forward to getting out into the field for day three. On your mind, trouble at your feet, living by the gun, the devil's got you. So we haven't heard anything at all when we get a call from Nick and he's got a bugle. Once we met up with Nick, we jumped out of the truck and it was hunt on. Too many people on this particular hunt, I think I'm just going to hang back to kind of keep the noise factor down. Bull's coming up. Well, sure enough, we get close to him, and he, he's coming in now. He's committed. He is, like, right there. So everybody's like, go, 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 hide. You know, we just, like, blend into a tree. He's right here, he's right here, he's right here. Literally, he is right there. He's on the other side of the tree, just staring at us. And we're all just like in stealth mode. Don't breathe, don't move, don't do anything. What he said. I'm sorry. I hit him. It was a really quick decision, but Stephanie made a great shot. After I shot, I was apologizing because I just really wasn't for sure if I was supposed to shoot him or not. Nobody said shoot him, I'm sorry. I mean, he looked decent, he just wasn't, he ain't got a whole lot of mass. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She was really concerned that it wasn't the bull she was after, and it was, it was kind of hard for her there for a minute. I mean, it's, it's still a 338 inch bull, but Stephanie was a little upset. Why do we do stuff like that? That's how stuff works. He's not that little. I screwed up, honey. It's bad. He's not that young either. That's what I was thinking. Look at his body. He ain't. Th he's not, he ain't that little. He has no mass. I'm None. not teasing. Like I'm not schmoozing you at all. Like he's a pretty dang nice bull, and he's he's not young. So I walk over and look where it fell, and I'm like, man, this is really a really cool elk. And I go over and I try to tell her that, and I keep hearing, no, it's not. No, it's not, he's little, I shouldn't have shot. And you know, 10,000 other excuses as to why she shouldn't have shot. And you know, I keep looking back over in this thicket and there's just antler going up for days out of this, this little oak shrub thicket. Thinking this is, you really probably ought to get up and go look at the bull before you decide that you've shot a bike. It was a go time. It was like now or let him pass. And you know, we're into the hunt a couple days and just, it was a game call situation and I made it. Was I supposed to shoot him? Nobody said anything, I pulled the trigger. Was I supposed to shoot him? It's not your fault, I'm the one who pulled the trigger. and I, I should have known better. I'd shoot him. No, you wouldn't have. I, you, yes, I you would. You pass up on 500 bulls. No, I'll shoot him. They don't even make those and you pass them up. And there's people that would give everything to kill the bull that she just got. Can you say spoiled? I'm staying out of this one. Nice boy, he's got a good front end, very cool. Once we walked up to him, I really felt a lot better at making the decision to shoot him because he really was a nice elk. And everybody was, you know, very happy with him. So I was great, great with it after that. That was a lot of fun, thank you. You bet. It was very really cool. cool, really cool yep. hunt. Yep, that was cool. One reason I was apologizing because I knew he just wasn't quite the elk that I shot last year. See that. 
I think I now know why she's upset. She's thinking about the bull she killed last year and comparing it to this bull. And they're both great bulls. Last year I killed my first and last bull with a bow. Bow hunting is ridiculous. I don't see why people put themselves through that. So this year, just to be different, I thought I'd take my 500 Nitro that my father gave me to take to Africa years ago. I mean, that's kind of different, isn't it? To shoot an elk with a 500 double cannon. Dan loves guns, and for him to be able to take this gun that his dad gave him on the elk hunt, that means a lot to him. You know, this double rifle Dan's taken, it's a beautiful Holland double 500. It's very dear to his heart, this gun. Anytime that I get a chance to use that 500 Nitro, I try to do it because it just means so much to me. So we're headed out with, it's Dan's up now, and uh, we're headed into an area we just kind of had skimmed over a little before, not really hunting it thoroughly, but we saw a lot of sign there, and we know there's elk there, so we're, we're optimistic that we're gonna find something good here. First thing out of the truck, we're on a bull. We get a bugle immediately. So we got our stuff real quick and started moving in to try and figure out what we were looking at. We get set up really good and we finally get some glass on this bull. There he is. Where is he, Bridger? He's way up on the ridge. You can see him shining. Got it, got it, got it. Yes, I do. You, you end up, you make the final call, but I want you to watch him. He's looking at you right now. Okay, so whenever, you tell me whenever I can move. Yeah, I will. Okay, if the wind's going across like this way. Hang on. Okay. Wait. 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 Go, 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 go. Bridger gets behind us and hides, and he starts calling. He just starts coming at a lope, you know, down the hill, across the valley, and he's, he's coming hard. He's coming by that tree, Steve. It's left side seven for sure. That's when I decided I'm gonna take this bull. He's coming at a run. <laughs> that was cool, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. well, he came in. Hagen, you gotta quit breathing like yeah, that, man. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Double rifle. That was amazing. Seriously. Oh, thank you. I didn't get to see you shooting, but it was. You didn't? Uh uh. <laughs> he was right there. I heard old Bertha report. Did I you? Figured, I figured it was not good for him. <sighs> man, he's cool, huh? He, yeah, is. he is. He's long points, man. Yeah. So it's straight seven by seven, isn't he? That was awesome. Way to go, baby. Thanks. Oh, 
elk hunting hands down is my favorite, favorite hunt. I love listening to him, I love listening to him bugle, and a week in a camper, it's fun camping, but after a week, I've had enough, I'm ready to go home, take my own shower, my own bed, and next year, you just never know who might get to go. I've got the perfect spot for a giant New Mexico bull elk. I just need to get invited. I don't ever get invited to go to the elk hunt. Maybe next year. This elk hunt is remarkable for me because it kind of puts together everything that I'm all about. You know, I get to take pictures. I get to see big, pretty elk. I get to hunt elk in a super secret spot that I'm not going to tell anybody where it is. You know, I get to find an animal big enough that I can use the rifle dad gave me. And I get to see Stephanie do what she loves to do and be with great friends that I've known for a very long time. I mean, it's one of my favorite hunts of the year. For all your wildlife or social media needs, make sure to follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.